and welcome to Community Board 8 Speaks. My name is Dave Rosenstein. I'm a member of Manhattan's Community Board number 8 and your host for tonight's broadcast. Community Board 8 Speaks is a monthly program about issues of interest to residents and businesses in the Community Board 8 area. That's 59th Street to 96th Street, the entire east side from Fifth Avenue to the East River, as well as Roosevelt Island. Uh, community boards are local representative bodies. There's 50 unsalaried members appointed by the borough president in consultation with city council members who represent the district. In our case, uh, there's two city council representatives, uh, Jessica Lappin and Dan Garodnik. Manhattan has 12 community boards. Community boards play an advisory role in zoning and other land use issues in community planning in the city budget process and in coordination of municipal services. You can learn more about the community board on our website, which is www.cb, as in community board, 8m for Manhattan.com, www.cb8m.com. There's a lot of information there. There's also a place where you can download an application to the borough president if you'd like to serve on a community board. Uh, our guest tonight is our district manager, Letha Thompson. The um, district manager is the senior salaried person who runs the board office and keeps everything going. Ms. Thompson is a native of South Central Virginia, and there's still a trace of uh, Virginia in her voice. She has been uh, district manager since December of 2008 and has been with the community board in various positions, actually an assistant district manager, for 11 years. Uh, before that, she was a staffer on another Manhattan Community Board, number 10. Alatha came to New York from the United States Air Force, where she was a, used to be called the Buck Sergeant, an E-4. Um, she was at the uh, U.S. Air Force Base in, in Selik, Turkey, during uh, Operation uh, Desert Shield and Desert Storm, and was trained in uh, bomb disposal, and I, I think spent a little time with the uh, a mine detector uh, in the Mideast. Laitha, welcome to uh, Community Board 8 Speaks. Thank you for having me, David. Maybe a good way to start is to give our listeners an idea of, of, a, of a typical day. Well, a typical day for me would be to first I go through the numerous amounts of emails and telephone calls that I've gotten. Um, we get anywhere from 100 to 175, sometimes 200 emails um, in the office on a daily basis. Um, we get quite a number of phone calls from residents, from agencies, um, nonprofits um, throughout the day. Um, that goes on all day. And these are real emails, not junk no, no, no. advertisements. We, we, no, no, we, no. We, the small amount of uh, junk emails are no way in comparison to the number of actual Things you have requests. to attend to. Exactly, exactly. So um, that keeps me quite busy. In addition to helping the board members with whatever requests that I get from them on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's, it's, it's a pretty active um, job. It, the, the office keeps busy on a day to day, but there's very little downtime for us, very little. So, and you have a staff? Yes, I have a staff right now of, there are four of us in office now, um, which is up from two. Um, we picked up an additional two staff persons within the last 30 days. Um, we have one part-time community assistant and one office assistant, which is both part-time positions. Um, and they've been quite a big help to me in the last month or so. And I'm very glad to have them. In my years uh, serving on the community board and again on the community board in the 90s, I spoke with many people who didn't know what a community board is. They didn't know we had a board office. They didn't know that there were people who could help them. Yeah. Um... We, when our office was on 94th Street, as a matter of fact, it was 309 East 94th Street, if I remember correctly, um, we had a number, we were in the HRA building. I think the bulk of the walk-ins, people thought that we were HRA. Um, they were coming and asking HRA questions, and then they would discover... That was the city's Human Resources Administration it, yes, building it, on yes, 94th exactly. Street. Yes, um, exactly. They would then discover that 
we were the community board. Um, we were a resource. We had information that um, they found very helpful. Um, we would always have to. I would always have to send them upstairs to HRA on the the upper floors of the building. But you know, because they thought we were responsible for the elevator at that time, because we were on the ground floor. Now you, um, as one of your responsibilities, you have a monthly meeting that you chair called the District Service District Cabinet. Service Cabinet. Our meetings meet the last Tuesday of every month. Um, I meet with the local agency representatives that handle the complaints for us, such as DOT. That's Department of Transportation. Department of Transportation. I'm used to acronyms. The Department of Transportation, Department of Sanitation, Department of Buildings, the 19th Precinct, um, and other agencies, uh, Department of Environmental Protection, uh, Department of Health. Um, they all send reps, and they're very good at attending these meetings and very helpful and very useful resources to have. Now you chair that meeting? Yes, I chair that meeting. So you set the agenda? Uh, I set the agenda. Uh, this meeting is not open to the public, um, but any constituent or board member or anyone who has an issue or problem that's within the confines of Community Board 8 that they would like addressed or follow up on, if they give me the information, I'll make sure that they get an answer from the agency rep. Um, as quickly as possible. Now you're in contact with city agencies throughout the course of the month, so yeah. you don't have to wait until the monthly no. district no, cabinet no. meeting. Um, if there's an issue that needs resolution right away, they can always contact me at the board office, and um, I'll get them a follow up with the agency as quickly as possible. Like what kind of problems uh, do um, residents, businesses bring to the board? We have a number of, of issues. Vendors, big issue. Noise, traffic. Uh, the Second Avenue subway issue is always coming up. Um, there are also um, residents who have issues about landlord tenant, which we don't do a lot with. I can refer them out to other agencies um, because we, you know, don't usually handle landlord tenant issues. Um, but we do get a number of complaints with regards to landlord tenants, uh, traffic. Those are the you know, about the bigger issues that, you know, I handle from day to day. Um, we also have a number of people who will walk in with issues, um, who have never been to the office before, have been directed to our office, and will bring issues to us. Um, and I, I welcome anybody to the office, you know, between hours of 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, um, to bring, me, bring the concerns in, and we'll try to get them resolved. Many people have expressed uh, frustration with 311 because it isn't immediately responsive. Um, are you able to do more? Or in the case of, for example, a noise complaint, that seems to be one of the biggest issues. Yeah. Um, nighttime bars, bars with music, the windows open. Yeah, um, that is a very big problem in Community Board 8 because we have a large number of bars and restaurants in our district. Um, if you have filed a complaint with 311 for a noise issue um, and you have got, gotten no resolution through 311, they would need to contact me, uh, provide me with the 311 number, and I would do follow up with either the precinct or with the Department of Environmental Protection. Um, it depends, with, cause, because with noise, it depends what type of noise it is, where it's coming from. That will determine which, which agency will receive the complaint. And when you made reference to a 311 number, that viewers should know that. They have to get a number. Yes, please, when you call 311, always get the reference number. Um, if you don't, for some reason, get a, a reference number, please ask them for one because they are supposed to automatically give you one. That is the tracking mechanism that we use for follow-up. Um, without that, there's no way to do the follow-up as quickly. as It would, it would take some time. Um, but if they would get the 311 number, call me, um, give it to me, and I'll do the follow-up for them. This will save them a step. Now, in our Street Life Committee, which is the community board committee that deals with uh, liquor license applications, they can't approve or disapprove them, right. but they make recommendations to the state liquor authority yes. or enclosed or unenclosed outdoor cafes. When they ask you if there have been complaints, you have some way. Yes, to we have out. a record. We have a record. So, uh, if someone brings a, a noise complaint for a bar, uh, we keep that in our files so that when they're called up. Um, the co-chairs will ask if there's any complaints on file 
we will have a record of that complaint, which we can then provide to them, and then they can address uh, their complaint as part of their renewal application um, when they come before the Street Life Committee or a new application as far as they're concerned. What about before. complaints that go to 311? Are you able to get information from 311? 311 will provide us um, with some information. Mm, noise um, complaints, for yeah, example. Yeah, they'll give, us a, they'll give us a, a number. Mm -hmm. How um, many? How many have been, have been filed through 311 for a certain, a, a certain amount of time? Um, which, yeah, they will release that information to us, um, which we can, like I said, share with the Street Life Committee co-chairs and they can um, take that information and use it at their discretion. And if there's police uh, responses to events at, at bars, will that also be information that you'll pull yes. together for the um, yes, community absolutely. board committee? We can, also, we can also call the precinct and um, get their numbers, um, you know, and provide that information also to the co-chairs of the committee. I think a lot of uh, community board members may not be that familiar with the, uh, the district service cabinet and there's another monthly meeting that's even uh, more uh, higher level. Yes, that's Borough Service Cabinet. Meeting. Borough Service Cabinet. That's chaired by uh, the Manhattan Borough President, Scott Stringer. Um, that meeting, um, all 12 district managers um, attend that meeting, and the agency, the uh, borough agency representatives from each of the agencies are in attendance at that meeting. Um, these are uh, issues, they handle issues that are, can be borough-wide. Um, it could be that there's an issue that overlaps community boards. Those type of issues are handled at Borough Service Cabinet. So we had a, we had a question of a, uh, an outdoor cafe, an enclosed outdoor cafe that had ceased to, to have a license. Yes. It was no longer under the jurisdiction of the um, Department of Consumer Affairs because the license had lapsed. Yes. Um, and the question was, what happens to it? Who decides whether to remove it? I understand you. that was brought up at yes. the, the borough. The borough service cabinet. That's brought, been brought up several times. And there's other cabinet. instances throughout the city. Yes. So they can see patterns. Yes. Um, those type of issues, since it w has been a number of locations that have fallen into that, that type of um, situation, um, th that is handled at borough service cabinet. Um, they will take that type of issue and the borough president will do follow-up and, you know, he gets his, his responses much quicker than I get mine. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they're doing follow-up on that. And and you told me that the, the borough president is pretty strict about oh, yes. attendance. Yes, yes. You, you, you really have to have a good excuse not to attend because um, he expects his district managers to attend the meetings. Um, as they should. And he's able to get the city uh, agencies oh, yes. to... Uh... Oh, yes. Yes. He's, he, you know, when, when the borough president calls, um, I don't think you turn him down. I think you attend whatever meeting you want. he wants you to attend. So, yeah, he gets very good attendance. Mm -hmm. Now, you also handle an enormous amount of paperwork for the community board. Yes. For the monthly meetings. Yes. The minutes. We do minutes. We do mailings, um, any information that um, should be forwarded to all the board members, which is notices from city agencies, nonprofit groups. Um, we mail it out, email it out, um, fax it in some cases, um, not as much as we used to, but you know we're moving away from faxing, more towards emailing now. Um, we, we get a, a large amount of information on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I have to go through and make the determination in consultation with the board chair, you know, what it is that the board members are to receive. Um, once Jackie's seen it and given approval for it, um, that's Jacqueline Jackie Ludorf, our, was... our board, our current board chair. Um, once she's given the approval, then I will forward it to the board members. Um, you know, and, and from day to day, sometimes y'all get two, three emails from me in a day, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> Without email, I, I could not uh, uh, be useful right. on the community board. Right. So, and anything that you can't get by email, I put it in, in regular mail um, so that you have the information like prior to a land use meeting or prior to a full board meeting. So, yeah, I have to make we sure have, you have information. Do we have the full 50 members that... Um... If I believe we do. I believe we have a standing 50 right now. Yeah, I don't think we have any openings. 
Without naming any names, are there any? We have a couple of community board members who don't have email. Yes. Two or three. Yes. Yes, we do. Get computerized. <laughs> uh, what's the what's the um, the number one um, complaint? The, the biggest source of complaints. What area is is the most concerned? Right now, I would say it's the it's Second Avenue. Second Avenue subway construction. Yeah, the, the, the construction, of course. Um, that's, that generates quite a number of complaints, which we address as quickly as possible. Um, we also get a number, we still get a number of complaints with regards to the Rupert Playground issue, where they're going to convert the playground into housing. Um, we get, we still get, I, I still get day to day, I get an average 10, maybe 15 emails on that still. Really, um, just unsolicited members of the community who yeah, are concerned? Yeah, who are still and... concerned. Maybe um, during the time that we held our hearings, um, which were earlier in the summer, um, many people were out of town. Maybe they weren't aware. You now they're coming back in, you know, with fall a year, but it's getting back into their normal schedule. They're learning about these issues, and they, you know, they want to make their concerns known, and they do. They do. Um, I, I will have to say that this community is very involved and very active in all aspects of issues that come through, which is a very good thing. I think it's very good that everybody gets involved in whatever the issue is. They, 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 mm -hmm. they stay on top of everything and, and keep me busy. Now, as part of your, your work, you also come to the, the monthly full board community meeting, yes. which is the third Wednesday of every month. Yes, third Wednesday of every month. Um, locations are be determined from month to month. Um, Again, the, the board's website, www.cb8m, as in Michael or Manhattan.com, has a calendar. Yes. And if you open that page, there's a listing for each of the committees. Yes, for each committee. For the full board. And you, you update that, so you also yes, I are getting that. internet set. Yes, yes. Yeah, practice makes perfect. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I update it once a month. Any changes, um, I have someone in the office now that they can update it for me, try to keep it as updated as possible. Um, there are still one or two minor glitches, but, you know, um, I'll try to resolve those as quickly as possible. Um, but right now, it's fairly updated with the most recent information. Um, so I encourage everyone to go visit the website. Now, you also have a responsibility for making sure that notices of various committee meetings, if a committee is going to hear an application for a liquor license, there has to be a posting of yes. the notice of that Yes. Um, establishment. What we ask is that all the applicants are post in the area surrounding their location, um, whether it be a street life application um, for a uh, sidewalk cafe or a liquor license renewal or a new application um, or for landmarks or for transportation or a parks committee. We ask the applicant to post and send me notice that the posting has been done. They have to show me proof that they've actually put it up. Um, and you or stay on top of the making yeah, they, sure that the notices have, go they, out. Yes, I um, forward the information to them. I, we will create the flyer for them, mm -hmm. and we will forward it to them. And but we have to we ask them to send us back notice. Um, and and a lot of people will do that. Um, it, it's not a hard thing to do. Um, they will send me back a written notification and pictures of where they posted up the flyers, which is really good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So you've got twenty, thirty, forty, or more posters yeah. to make up every yes. month's and, edition and make sure that they get out. And, yes, uh, and um, we also have board members who also stay on top of that and will, you know, let me know if they if there's a flyer missing, that they never saw a flyer go up. Um, and at that point, I'll have to contact the applicant mm -hmm. and, you know, ask them what happened. You... Um, Came to New York from from the Air Force. Yeah. Uh, your first job was with Manhattan Community Board, Board 10. Mm -hmm. So you didn't know New York, but you knew organizational skills and management skills, yes. and logistics, and keeping yeah. track of of ordinance, yes. bombs. Yes. So um, ordinances and supply. Um, my peacetime duty was stock control and inventory. Uh, wartime duty was explosive ordinance. So. Yeah, I came with one or two. Or, uh, yeah, it took me a while to, to learn the subway and the city itself. But that came after being here for a little while. So, yeah. 
So now the issues are explosive, but they're not. Yeah. <laughs> they're not dangerous, but right. they, you've got to juggle a lot of uh, yes. hot potatoes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, some sometimes it can be a little day, <laughs> a little dangerous, but. Um, now you've been on the, the uh, in the in the senior position of district manager for uh, it'll be a year this coming December. December, yeah. Uh, how are you finding it? Um, it's I like the job. Um, it's very interesting. It keeps me busy. Um, not to say that the assistant district manager position didn't keep me busy. But this is just a little more. Um, it's um, I, I like it because I like to deal with people. I like the problem solving aspect of it, um, and you know it's it's I like the puzzles because it's it's people bring me issues, and it's my job to try to figure out how to get their issues resolved. Um, I'm not saying that all the time they can be resolved, but I'll try. I try as, as best I can to get it resolved as quickly as possible. Yeah. So I, I really enjoy it. It's, it's, it's really... It's public service. Yeah, it's public service, yeah. Now our board office is on Park Avenue. We are, on, we are at 505 Park Avenue, which is uh, the, north, the north side of uh, Park Avenue between 59th and 60th Street. Um, we've been there as long as I've been on the community board, 11 years. Well, we were, we were, we were on 94th Street. Yeah, we were 309 East 94th Street between 1st and 2nd for... Um, a number of years. Um, when I when I got there, we moved like within months of me uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> arriving. So now our budget is every community board has the same budget except for the rent. Yes, which changes depending on yes what the prevailing rents are yes. in the board area. Yes, and uh, depending on if you're in the city building or in a private building. Yes. Um, now we faced a budget cut, which was threatening to do real we, harm to our ability to. Yes, Keep to operating. operate. Yes, um, the budget cut was approximately thirty thousand dollars, if I remember correctly. Um, we did rallies. The uh, the uh, elected officials were very supportive of us. We had a we held a rally on the steps of City Hall. Um, uh, the borough president was very instrumental in leading and getting rallying all of us. Um, the city council did restore our our, our monies which we're very appreciative of because I think in a lot of cases, community boards, some community boards may have had to close, uh, lay off people. Um, it, was, it was looking really grim at one point, um, but we were very happy when the money was restored. Um, it gave us the ability to run the office, um, hire staff, you know, and just pay the staff that we have uh, for the work that they do. So, it, you know, it was one crisis averted, and hopefully, um, the, with the economy, everything will get better, and we won't have to face that again next year. So we're all kind of keeping our fingers crossed right now. I'm thinking of the uh, the materials that you bring to the full board meeting. Okay. Every board member has an envelope. Yes. With agendas uh, agendas any committee reports that uh, that will have resolutions that need to be voted on at the night of the meeting um, any other mi minutes corrected minutes um, any other information mail um, that we get in the board office um, that we can't get to you um, prior to the meeting we put it in your envelope the night of any other any important information that we think that you should have you have it tonight that's both for the full board and for the land uh, use me committee meetings. Um, so uh, now the land use committee for those who uh, are just learning about the community board process. In our board, the land use committee meets as what's called the committee of the whole. So all fifty members meet. Yes. On the second Wednesday of the month. And um, all votes are final. You do not have to bring. If you make a presentation before the land use committee. Uh, you do not have to come back to the full board and make another presentation. That's uh, the votes at the land use are final, um, and those resolutions are forwarded to the agencies um, within the next day or within the next couple of days. So, um, and and yes, the board members do get the same type of package at land use as they do at full board. So you've got with your staff to yes. put those together. Yes. Another fifty yes. envelopes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Plus, I guess envelopes for elected officials who uh, whose representatives would attend yes. at the full board. Meeting. Yes, at the full board meeting, they will attend and they have packets. Uh, any information that they want uh, prior to the meeting, they can call me. They can get it. Mm -hmm. And you've also got to follow up and let the various city agencies know what action the board has taken. Yes, um, and it, we always send out 
resolutions. The resolutions go out to all the electeds, um, CC to any city agencies that they are not addressed to. Um, and um, we do, and then I'll do the follow up behind it if it requires follow up. Um, if some things, some items are going on to agency agendas, like uh, I can think of the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Um, we said we forward them the resolutions, and their meetings are fairly close to the dates we hold our full board meetings, if not before. Um, so we have sent our re recommendations to them uh, fairly quickly. So turnover time is re really short in most cases. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but the packets can get kind of thick for board members because there's a lot of information that we get in the board office that the board members should have. And and we're part of, um, as as a community board member, we're part of a kind of mini legislative body. Yes. We have to, we don't have decision making, but we have an advisory role and yes, agencies it, listen yes. and they work with us. Yes, they, we have a very good rep, uh, reputation with agencies. Um, they are very responsive to us in most cases. I'm not going to say all of them, but in most cases, um, agencies will take our recommendation and, um, you know, follow through on the decisions that we make. Um, I don't think that there are any, there are one or two, I don't want to say, but who may not take our recommendations at face value, but they will um, take our comments and add it to their to their uh, decision-making process. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll follow whatever recommendations that we make, which I think is very good, because I don't think it happens all the time. Well, we're, we're running out of time. Um, I really appreciate your taking the time. Thank you, David. When I was in the office uh, this afternoon, the phone rang three or four times for you <laughs> in the 10 minutes that I was there. Um, Latha Thompson is our district manager, Community Board 8. If you call the office, if you need help, you will talk to somebody who will give you their first and last name. You can write it down. Uh, it's not an anonymous bureaucracy. We're here to help. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. We hope it's been useful. I'm Dave Rosenstein for Community Board 8. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, David. <laughs>